Welcome back. If you've just joined us in this today's special, we're asking how can South Africa create and sustain small black-owned businesses in an inclusive economy? We saw the government recently move very swiftly to push for locally produced hair products to find meaningful uh, retail shelf space following the recent clicks, Tresemme racist ad that caused national outrage. Joining me on today is Mzwanele Memani, Director of Value Chain Analysis in the Department of Small Business Development, Eustis Mashimbia, the CEO of Proudly South Africa, Rashida Mullah, the President of the South African Informal Traders Alliance, and uh, Mr. Mike Nguna, the Chairman of Masingita Group of Companies, widely regarded as one of the most successful commercial and retail property developers in South Africa. Eustis, we had a bit of a connectivity issue with you earlier. I'm hoping the audio has improved now. I had asked you, as we continue this, if you may want to be brief, are you as proud as South African failing in your bid to promote local procurement and, uh, and, and influence consumers to buy local products? Okay, thank you, Braden. I hope you can hear me now. Uh, we certainly do not think that proud South African, uh, we do not think that we are failing. And, uh, I mean, we have uh, a take reasonable success for a couple of years in terms of getting. Uh, shelf space or look up and levels of look up increase uh, in retail stocks, uh, in, in both total textile and leather industry as well as any kind. And the next industry is open, uh, the fast moving, which is what we're talking about. And we have hosted a workshop together with the consumer council of South Africa. I hosted a workshop last year where they engage this retailer what it is that can be done to help increase in their stores. And the next phase, those, kind of, those discussions was for us to uh, have bilateral and we have started having And there are offers on, uh, for some of our brands that tend to start living on those sales, either house brands, if retailers, or for them to go in as a brand. Because one of the challenges that I are faced with, and that's that if they have a product on the shelf, they must not buy it. It is so there is a need to build up these brands and part of the market. And so we have a drive to increase the number of products that are raised and then be taken to it. Yeah. Because the minute we the parties that can low, they immediately know the product that can be trusted right, for that which it is. Yeah, and yeah. so we have. Mr. Mashimbe, your, 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 your microphone on your device there is letting us down. It keeps on cutting. I don't know if you're using your device mic or a special mic. But uh, we sort of get a sense, um, I got a sense of what you were saying, uh, that, that you don't think you're losing the battle to influence local procurement. There are workshops, there are bilateral discussions that are going to be happening. But just before we went to a break, Rashida was making a point that there's all these engagements with all these stakeholders and implementation is failing. Uh, Mr. Memani, from the department's perspective, what's going to change now to make sure that there is proper action that's implemented to benefit locally manufactured goods? Yeah, Braden, thanks for that question. Um, so you may have noticed that from our perspective, when an apology was made, we said um, an apology is not enough. Uh, it has to be accompanied by an action and for us, an action is to see that more and more products produced by uh, South African small companies, in particular black, uh, women-owned, youth-owned, and those uh, businesses owned by people with disability, find space in the shelves of these businesses. And so, again, we're going to continue that engagement with, with wholesalers, with retailers, and I think we have practical examples we can share that South Africans can walk into uh, Devland, uh, south of Soweto, and see products uh, manufactured by small companies listed in Devland. They can go to BP Cash and Carry in Guagua, and they will see products uh, manufactured by, by SMEs. So throughout the country, Braden, we, we're talking to all the wholesalers, mm -hmm. and, 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 and so we're engaging them, as well as retailers, to ensure that uh, social space is made available for products manufactured by, by companies. Also, and also, fact, also, well, also, also on the big retailers, you've mentioned some names, but uh, I didn't hear pick and pay, I didn't hear clicks, I didn't hear shop right checkers, I didn't hear Woolworths. 
We, we're talking to them, uh, Pradhan. So last week, uh, you, you may have seen a media release uh, when we engaged with clicks and subsequently we have meetings with pick and pay and we are continuing those meetings to make sure we, we can inform them these are the SMMEs we work with and they can find space. And tomorrow uh, we are leading the discussions, a minister leading the, our delegation meeting with the Spark Group as well as Unilever for tomorrow. And next week, again, so there's a series of meetings uh, that, that we are engaging uh, with all the retailers. And not only retailers, Braden, but also the big suppliers uh, like Pioneer Food, like the Tiger Brands. It's important that... Uh, like Unilever? Like, like, Unilever. You, like Unilever? Uh, correct, correct. We, we're meeting with Unilever tomorrow, yeah. Okay, now, now, now uh, Rashida was making a point earlier, and I want to ask you, uh, uh, Mr. Nkuna, here in the studio, that it's well and good, stakeholders are meeting, people are talking. Now, we are hearing the government is planning and is engaging with all the suppliers, the wholesalers, the retailers to change the, the future, to make sure that locally produced goods beyond hair products find shelf space. But you've been in business for a long time. You mentioned earlier that when you started, you felt proud as a South African when you were stocking up some locally produced goods. What's been your experience? Where are we failing here? Well, uh, thanks, Braden, again. You know, the problem, you know, I'll be frank with you, uh, the problem is w uh, with our government. Uh, our government is supposed to play a role of uh, regulating and making sure that, you know, uh, the big business and smaller business work, you know, in an environment which is conducive. So what's happening in this instance? You find our government is engaging in seminars, in workshops, in all this kind of research. But you see, when it comes to implementation, the, uh, the government, you know, find itself, you know, wanting. But I'm glad, you know, to hear from a uh, 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 government now saying that, you know, uh, they've started, you know, engaging with all businesses uh, uh, to say uh, they must engage, you know, uh, local uh, producers so that, you know, uh, we can create jobs. Because, you see, if we don't do that, we won't be able to uh, create jobs. And, you know, uh, we still have to give our people confidence that, you know, when they go out there and, you know, be creative and come uh, with an ideas of producing a certain hair products or any other products, knowing well that, you know, the market will be there. Even farmers, if, you know, uh, we have, you know, people who are willing to go into farming, ourselves as, you know, property developers, we must also engage to uh, our tenant, with our tenant, to say, when we put you in these shops, we we'll expect you to look into the local people so that, you know, they can exercise the farming and supply, you know, your stores. And those kind of things will uh, uh, help, you know, to uh, create jobs in this country. Creating Instead jobs. Of talking. Yeah. R R Rashida, you, you also sort of said earlier that... Uh, we talk a lot, we engage a lot, but we're not implementing. When you hear uh, Memani from the Department of Small Business Development saying there's lots of engagement, like there's action movement, are you encouraged that the future might be different for your members? Absolutely. I, I believe that the acknowledgement and the role of the informal sector is, not, is underplayed. We are not sitting around the tables when policies are made about us. And we are saying nothing about us without us. Let us be in negotiations with you. We know what's best for our sector. For example, I'm listening to the discussion now and we have so much skill in the informal economy with regard to manufacturing of leather sandals, leather bags, clothing, apparel. We need proudly South African labels to be pushed. And beyond that, we need to have the action plan of delivering. And Saita is there as a vehicle for the informal sector to ensure delivery if government has the political will to take that journey with us. Now, it's very critical uh, to understand uh, from, from government. Now, I'm going to bring you back again, Mzwanele, 
The president is said yesterday, last night that an economic recovery plan post-COVID-19 is in the making. There's been agreement. We'll find out the details very soon. I'm seeing a lot of speculation already about the draft plan, talking about jobs. Mr. Nkunaye was talking about the role of, uh, of small business and informal sector now with uh, Rashida in creating jobs if they are part of it. And the focus is going to be about jobs and then also the reduction of red tape. Now, if you are a small producer of whatever you've made that you want to get onto the shelves, there's a lot of red tape. Is the small business department, development, business development department going to assist those small, medium-sized uh, players to make sure there's not too much red tape in them accessing the shelf space? Absolutely, Braden. Um, that, that is one of our key interventions. Uh, not only to do negotiations and talking with retailers, but also to look at what are the barriers to entry, what are those uh, areas that um, hinder businesses from accessing opportunities. So you, you're quite spot on. That. So one of the things we have recently launched, it's, it, it's a manufacturing scheme, which is really aimed at making sure where there are areas of red tape, and th those areas are really smoothened and, and, and that uh, businesses can, can be uh, supported uh, with issues of quality and, and compliance and whatever is required, we put it in place so that they can find a shelf space in the business. And in fact, uh, I think about three or four months ago, we started uh, discussions with proudly South Africa. So Brayustas is there knowing very well. So some of the small companies we work with, we've said to proudly SA, let's also work together with you so that they also get more exposure uh, not only to the South African market, but also if it is possible, they can have access to opportunities outside of the country. We, we need to get a sense as consumers, I'm a consumer, uh, that it's the time for talking is over. For, for small business, because everywhere we, we, you read now, as we are th thinking about the recovery beyond COVID-19, and we know the economy was in trouble before coronavirus pandemic broke. We were already in the doldrums. Economic-wise, our growth was nowhere. But we keep on hearing about the importance, the crucial role of small and medium enterprises. We talk, we say the right things. I think when we continue, I want to get a sense from all of you, what will be these necessary action steps to take now to raise really shift the needle, to really change the landscape going forward so we have an inclusive economy. Stay with us.